<laughs> Nathan, uh, your book here, Outlaws uh, British Seafood, I see uh, the lovely Rick Stein has done the forward for it. Yeah. You were with Rick for a bit, were you? Yeah, I did a couple of years with Rick um, in the late 90s. Yeah. Um, um, and he's, he's my hero, basically, in terms of, um, you know, fish, you know, and, uh, and that's why I went to work with him in the first place. You know, so I, le I left left Cornwall, uh, sorry, left London, um, come to Cornwall to work with Rick, and um, so the rest is history. But he very, very kindly um, wrote the foreword for the um, for the book, um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's sort of, um, I'm very happy with it, you know. Absolutely. Well, um, you say he's your hero. You're a bit of a hero for him by the look of this yeah, in the yeah. foreword here. He says uh, he talks about you being charming, self-effacing, somewhat perplexed about the fact that he's, he's, he's starred in because he, he specialises in simple cooking, yeah. which is exactly, um, exactly what you do. Um, it, it, very nice to read that. Now, the book is, is an interesting one because you tackle it in a slightly different way. You, you've got dishes from your menu in here, mm. but you've also got uh, recipes yeah. that people can cook at home. So that, well, the whole point of writing a book, I mean, I think it's pointless writing a book um, that's very, very chefy in the first place. You know, too many chefs write these fancy books and no one wants to cook out of them. Yeah. So, and, and, and what, what I'm trying to do is, um, we're not, we are a meat-eating nation and I'm a, I'm a seafood chef, so um, most, if I get a chance to do anything publicly like this, it's to encourage people to eat and buy seafood, you know. So when I wrote the book, I wanted to include, there's a few, it shows how simple my food is at some mm. points, um, but there's also things in there that I just think you can whip up. And I, I, I believe, I always say this, that fish is a convenience food. It, you can cook a piece of fish within four or five minutes, it's done, you know, quicker than you can microwave one of these ghastly meals, mm. you know. So um, for me, it was, I wanted to fill this book full of that information and make it accessible for anybody to have a go. Um, but at the same time, I wanted to tell people about the you know, fascinating subject of seafood as well. So I broke the, broke the whole book down into species that's available in uh, British waters. And I, there's a few in there that are not in there because I don't really get on with that fish. You know, for example, Pollock's not in there. It's not sure. my cup of tea. So we didn't actually include any Pollock recipes in there. So, um, and then I've, it's done, I, when I, my idea for the book, which I, when I was talking to the publishers, when I was a kid, I used to get these story books that at the end of the page, you could choose where you went. Yes. Where you decided where the, the, this story was going. And what I wanted to do with the recipe was I wanted people to look at it like that as well. So they had a piece of sea bass in their hand that they bought from a fishmonger's or from a supermarket or wherever. Um, and they're like, well, what am I going to do with it? They pull the book out and then they can go, well, I can know I can do sea bass with this sauce and that garnish and or just keep it simple and cook it on its own. Well, some interesting things in here. I mean, tell me about Megrim. Well, Megrim is known as a Cornish sole as well, or a witch. The witch and Megrim are different, but they're always usually classed together. Um, and it's, um, it's from the sole family, um, and they, 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 ca they are found predominantly in the southwest. Um, again, it's, it's probably a cross between, I think, between um, a dover and a lemon in okay. terms of its texture. Um, and they can grow very big, up to sort of three kilos in size, and, and, they're, and they're actually sustainable and, and good value for money. So if you do see them, they're worth you know, having a go at. You, know. you obviously like cooking fish on the bone. Yeah. Um. Yeah, for me. I mean, cooking fish on the bone, it just is a different texture altogether. Yeah, and I think convenience-wise, a lot of people we cook fish on the fillet, but for me, on the bone, it's, and, and actually over coals is, is amazing as well, you know, if you can cook in things like that. So I'm a big fan of fire, but a big fan of raw and cured at the same time. So I yeah. like, you know, whatever the freshness is, whatever the state of the fish is. So, um, and that's what I tried to cover with this. Um, I'm writing my second book at the minute, because uh -huh. this one's done quite well, which I'm very pleased about. Um, and the publishers asked me to do another one. Um, and this one, where this one's about species, the next one's going to be about technique. So it's going to be the same sort of format, giving people the confidence to do the things, but it starts with raw goes into cured, soused, pickled, baked, all the way through, all the different techniques um, and um, same sort of style. So, um, But we've lovely feedback on, on the book, so it's, um, it's sold well, so we're giving some more recipes. And they're all, I try and keep the recipes unique as well. This one has got a few generic, like a curry and uh, things like that, um, just to give people that sort of base recipe where they can go and experiment with. But the next book... I've challenged myself to do a hundred unique recipes, which is always a bit of a challenge because everything's been done soon. But um, no, it, it's it, I enjoy writing, and with that four-hour train journey to London, I've got plenty of time to do it. <laughs> <laughs>
Thanks, Nathan. No worries. <laughs>